look at the words book and buku in bahasa. So we have book in English and we have buku in bahasa Indonesia. Hi, this recording is for translation and in this video, I'm going to be talking about equivalence at word level. When uh, we talk about translation, the responsibility of a translator is to keep the text being equivalent. So from the source language and the target language should be uh, equivalent. However, uh, we can say that uh, it's it's quite impossible to find equivalence. So, uh, in the other side of equivalence is non-equivalence, in which the translations uh, or the languages, both the source and the target, uh, will not be equivalent. That's what we're going to be talking uh, about here, and uh, we'll see the examples that I will give. Uh, is related to Indonesian languages, so the the Bahasa Indonesia itself, and then I will also relate to some other uh, languages like the Batak, Nias, and and some other languages, and then relate this translation to uh, English words. Okay, and because uh, what I will be talking here in this uh, video is only the equivalence. At word level, so we will cover only uh, words, while other kinds of equivalents will be uh, did later or discussed later in a different video. Now, uh, equivalence itself is about to, to keep the the texts uh, being at the same uh, balance, at the same uh, weight the same size, if we can term it like that, okay? uh, in respect of context, the same context, uh, the same semantic uh, issues in the words, and then uh, of the grammar, of the words, the lexis, uh, and also the ranks, like it, should it be like word-for-word -word translation, or phrase-to-phrase -phrase translation, or sentence-to-sentence -sentence, uh, translations. Uh, so, so it means that equivalence covers different levels uh, and different uh, contexts. But what we're going to be talking about here is uh, at the word level. So I will give you examples in which the, the translation cannot be uh, equivalent. So we will uh, see the non-equivalence here. If the, we look at the words book and buku in bahasa so we have book in english and we have buku in bahasa indonesia the when when the readers read these two words indonesian readers and english readers or when they hear the words they will of course refer to the same object very very similar object okay which is book okay so uh, we will not refer to any any different object when we hear the word buku in indonesian uh, and book in english okay. so with the same reference in mind okay we'll be thinking about the same the same idea uh, the same case with table i have the table here uh, in English and meja in bahasa. Because in English, for example, when we talk about table, we will have the characteristics, we'll think about the characteristics of this object table, which is like with flat top. Uh, it can be rectangle like this one, or it can be round like what, uh, like some other tables. Um, and of course, with legs, okay? So that's 
Those are the characteristics of table of the word table in English. Okay, so flat top. And when you hear the word meja or when you read the word meja in Bahasa Indonesia, we will also think about these same characteristics in which a meja should have a flat top, although it can be rectangle or it can be round, but with flat top and with legs. It depends whether it's whether a four leg uh, meja or a, uh, or three leg meja when it's round, uh, for example. So in this case, uh, if we look at these words that I have given, book and buku, table and meja, both words uh, from, from these languages are uh, in the same level. Okay? They can be called equivalent. Okay? So here, we arrive at the equivalence of these uh, words, both in English and in Indonesian. Okay. However, um, in many cases, equivalence cannot be obtained, cannot be reached. Uh, uh, it, is, it is impossible to see. Now, here I will be talking about the examples, especially uh, like culture bound terms, uh, kinship terms uh, in, in, in languages, especially Indonesian languages, and compare it. To English language, uh, to see the the issues that might uh, be found in uh, translation, especially equivalence. We see the uh, the word brother in English, okay. And when you when you ask somebody. English speakers who speaks Indonesian, for example, or Indonesian people who also understand English. What is the Indonesian word for brother? They will give you the word abang. So brother, abang. Okay, at glance, problem solved. But when we look deeper down into the characteristics of both words, we can say that these words are not equivalent, so we're dealing with non-equivalence here. Why? Uh, if we see brother, it always refers to a boy, and the word abang also always refers to a boy. Okay. To this level, up to this level, they are the same. They are equivalent. But if we look deeper, okay, into another characteristic or into another semantic meaning of the word brother, this word can refer to both younger brother and older brother. Okay, so, so that's the content of the word, semantic content of the word brother. However, if you look at the word abang, and Indonesian speakers will, will understand this, Abang cannot refer to uh, somebody younger in the family. Okay, it's it's always it always refers to the older brother. So brother can be younger, can be older, but abang is always older, cannot be younger. In this case. The word brother and abang are not equivalent. So it is, it is okay to translate abang into older brother. However, uh, although they are now semantically equivalent, but structurally or syntactically they are not equivalent because abang is at the word level while older brother is now at the phrase level, okay? So in this case, they're not equivalent structurally or syntactically, because one word and two words, okay? Word and phrase, yeah. Uh, or, uh, or the other way around when uh, translated brother into saudara laki-laki, for example, in Indonesian, uh, 
saudara laki-laki mean like uh, male sibling okay male sibling uh, and, and it's the same semantically they are equivalent but syntactically they are not equivalent because uh, brother is one word while saudara laki-laki uh, consists of two words okay so that's that's one example that i can uh, that, that that i can give uh, here about uh, non equivalence the other uh, in in my own language uh, nias language uh, and in batak language uh, we have the word sibaya or baya which means tulang in batak okay so i think for indonesian people uh, tulang is more famous than the word sibaya okay uh, so this one uh, sibaya or tulang means they, they, they mean the same because they refer to the brother of someone's mother okay so my my tulang is always the brother of my mother or in, in bata or in nias my sibaya is always the brother of my mother so they mean the same in indonesian if you ask Indonesian people, I mean, other than Batak and Nias uh, uh, tribes, the translation of Sibaya or Tulang into Indonesian, they will answer Paman. Paman. And in English, that will be translated Uncle. Okay. But, but, but we know that in English, or in Indonesian, the word uncle and the word paman can refer to uh, the, the brothers of either side, the mother's side or the father's side. Okay, so, so, uh, so in this case, uh, they're not equivalent because in Nias, and in, in, yeah, in Nias first, in Nias, I do not call the brother of my father as Sibaya. Okay. Like uncle. And in Batak, I cannot call the brother of my father as Tulang. Okay. This is different. So, so here, Tulang and Sibaya in these languages always refer to the brother of someone's uh, mother. They're not equivalent. We're dealing with non equivalence here. And, and what's more interesting is uh, there's more than this about the word tulang and, and sibayang. In the word tulang, there's a feeling, okay, because a tulang has res responsibility, uh, a huge responsibility to his niece and nephews okay in which he has to protect them he has to take care of them although not financially like the 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 parents but but uh, the, to to pray for them to bless them okay culturally uh, uh a tulang has this responsibility to uh to his nephews or nieces, uh, which are called as bere in, in uh, Batak language. And the other way around, like the nephews and uh, the nieces also, also have big responsibility to serve the tulang. Okay, so, and, and they can also ask things uh, to, the, to, uh, to their tulang, for example, which, uh, this these feelings are the feelings that cannot be felt, cannot cannot be cannot be obtained when we hear the word paman or uncle. Yeah. So so it uh, like 
when you call someone uncle, hi uncle, hi paman, and 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 so on, the the person referred to as uncle or paman probably do not does not have this feeling about responsibility. Okay, so this one calling me uh, is is someone under my responsibility that I have to take care of, uh, and 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 so on. And 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 uh, he has to serve me and to to respect me as a, a his tulang or her tulang and so on. Okay. So so in this case, for example, when when uh, the those from Batak culture or from Nias culture uh, will not allow uh, will not allow their uh, niece or their nephews to call them as uncle or paman. Okay, so when when they come to my place to the city, they tend to call me as paman. But for me, this does not feel anything. Uh, so 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 sometimes I call them. I I I say to them, okay, do not call me uh, uh, paman. Just call me baya or sibaya and so on. I think for uh, the Batak people also will feel the same when when their nephews or niece call them as uncle or paman. It doesn't feel anything, so they prefer to be called tulang. Uh, it's, it's like that. The the case of uh, equivalence. And then um, we have this word in Japanese, the word sunkam. Uh, when translated into English, maybe it's like uh, to bow down to the thigh of the parents. Okay. So so. Uh, is like okay the the father when you, this usually happens uh, it takes place in a wedding ceremony uh, so the mother is there and the father is there and and this child or this daughter or this son uh, will come to the father and to the mother so he will bow down to the thighs of his uh, parent. Uh, Saying things like apologize uh, and praising them, uh, telling them that I have, that that they he has made mistakes and that that, that they they uh, is asking for forgiveness. Uh, this 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 one is called uh, sunkom in in Japanese. Uh, but when we translate this word into bowing down. These messages are not there in the word uh, to bow, uh, or when you, like when you just just nod, uh, when when you translate this in English, okay. And and very often, uh, what I can see, even though I'm not I'm not a Japanese, but when I see the word, when I see people uh, doing this, uh, sometimes they do not have to say and they don't have to say anything. They don't have to say something. Okay, so just bowing there, just putting their heads in, on the thighs of their parents. But for us as the viewers, it's, it's like everything is said without saying anything uh, there. Because the feeling there, okay, I, I'm nothing, I'm just a child, I made a lot of mistakes to you. Uh, and please forgive me, you are great, you have done the best for me. Uh, all of this... Are, are wrapped in the word sunkam or in the action of, of doing sunkam to the parents uh, in, in Japanese culture. Okay? But when we translate this into English, these messages are gone. Okay? So, so that's another uh, example of uh, equivalence and non-equivalence as well. Okay? Or when we talk about the party, uh, in, in Japanese, or, or hajatan, for example, including in my in my uh, culture, the uh, uh, pesta uh, like that. Uh, for me, these words are not equivalent to, and 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 let me tell you uh, why I think these words are not equivalent. Uh, 
because for party, especially wedding party, what, what we know in English as party, wedding party, is that the it's limited to uh, the people invited and with a very short time, okay, with the allotted time in which when you come before and when you come after, the party is not there yet when you come before. Or, or, and when you come late and then uh, the groom and the bridegroom have already gone for uh, for honeymoon. But but in most of the cultures in Indonesia, also the, the tribes, when it comes to hajatan or the party uh, here, the party begins very, very, very early in the morning, at dawn even, uh, because, because the family uh, has to get ready okay, to, to, to do hairdos, makeup, things, uh, and so on until, until uh, dawn, the early morning, and that's going to the building. And it can, and it can last until afternoon, evening. So, so uh, when you go to the party in the afternoon, the part, the party is still going on. Or when you come at night, the party is still going on. So it's okay for you to come in the morning, or in at, at noon, or in the afternoon, or in the evening. Like, and very often, uh, you can hear the music until uh, midnight or after midnight at the same day. So, so, so we Indonesian people, that's what we have in our mind when we hear the word hajatan or pesta. But we do not, so, so we, we imagine this. However, for English speakers, when they hear the word wedding party or party, they, they do not imagine these things that I have uh, already mentioned. So, so in this case, what, uh, the, the the meanings of the the words determine that uh, these words are not equivalent. Um, last example that I can give, I guess, is is related to the word God or in English or Tuhan in Indonesia. Um, so so I used uh, when I was still very young, I I I heard I heard that I, I heard about people. Um, uh, especially the Muslims who, who, who say that it's not okay to translate the Quran into Indonesian or into other languages. Uh, so at that time, I thought that, oh, that's, how, how come? I think, I think it's okay because, because the Quran is written in one language. Uh, and when it's translated, it, it, it would be, uh, much better because the people from, uh, that speak other languages can can read the, the messages uh, in, in 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 the scripture. That's what I thought. However, after understanding the the concept of translation, especially equivalence, and and it became clearer to me that oh, okay, I think it's reasonable for them to say that it's not okay to translate the the Quran into a, a different language into Indonesian, for example. Uh, because like, if we look at the word uh, uh, Allah, for example, in in is in the in the Islamic concept, Allah is is uh, cannot cannot be uh, cannot it's it's impossible to conceptualize. Okay, it's transcendent, unreachable. It's it's difficult to define. Because it's the Almighty, uh, something like that, something like that, and and uh, no father, no son. Okay, uh, like in in Arabic, it's called lam yalid wa lam yula, something something like that. Okay, well, when we translate this, for example, into Allah. Okay, so we we translate or or Tuhan, so from Allah into God, in English. Or Allah in Indonesian uh, language, but from from Christian side, God or Allah can refers to something entirely different from the concept of the word Allah in Islam. Uh, like okay, so Allah here 
can die, can have a son, Jesus Christ, for example. Uh, so father and son, uh, which so it's, and and uh, crucified. Okay, uh, so this this concept is entirely different from the concept of Allah, uh, and it's different also from 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 God, okay? because especially in English, it's more difficult. I th I think because God can refer to uh, what we call as Dewa in Bahasa Indonesia, uh, uh, the gods and goddesses. Uh, in uh, in some some other cultures, with which which means that uh, God and Allah or Tuhan and Allah are not equivalent. So it's difficult to reach the level of equivalence here uh, at word uh, level. Okay, so those are the words, uh, the examples in which we find uh, non-equivalence in uh, at word levels. Uh, I really hope that uh, uh, this can uh, give, give this can be good examples uh, for for you about about non-equivalence uh, and non-equivalence in other levels or or how to handle. Uh, non equivalence can be can be a topic um, some other day thank you very much for watching terima kasih sudah menyaksikan video pembelajaran ini jangan lupa like komen dan subscribe serta nyalakan tanda loncengnya agar kalian tidak ketinggalan informasi update lainnya